Foldable phones are relatively new, but at this point, the pricing is coming down a ton. The form factor is getting more and more refined. And even at CES this year, Samsung Display showed me a ton of new form factors that they've been working on that just fold in a bunch of different ways and can even be used for laptops. It was honestly pretty cool, but it got me wondering how do foldable screens actually work? And how did we get to where we are now? with foldable screens. To answer that, I partnered with Samsung Display, who, by the way, has an 84% market share in foldable phones, according to CounterPoint Research. So, you know, they seemed like the right people to ask questions to about this. Okay, firstly, we need to at least briefly talk about the basics of how screens work. Okay, most screens in your life are comprised of pixels or dots arranged in a matrix. Now, each of these pixels has subpixels. Generally, each of these subpixels are red, green, and blue. And together, they make one pixel. Turning all three of these as bright as possible will give us white, and turning them down as low as they will go gives us black. And varying the brightness of each of the subpixels color can give us millions and sometimes billions of all the other colors in between. Now, if you've ever seen an RGB color value picker on the internet, that's one way to tell each pixel what color to be based on the red, green, and blue values of the subpixels in that pixel. And also a good way for me to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Now the layout of these subpixels is actually proprietary to the display manufacturer who makes it. For example, this is a non-Android flagship phone. Again, I parted with Samsung to make this video, so I can't say the name of the phone, but yeah. Here is another Android flagship, and this is the Samsung Z Fold 3, which you can see looks quite different. Now, Samsung calls this their diamond pixel structure, which they've actually been using ever since the Galaxy S4. Now, because of the unique diamond shape of the subpixels, namely the blue and red ones, the pixels that they form can be closer together, which is partly why Samsung's devices since the S4 have had higher PPI or pixels per inch than competitors with similarly sized screens. Now, this doesn't just mean higher resolutions within the same area. It also means that line expressions are sharper and text is clearer. Now, the way that displays go about lighting up these pixels can be wildly different. And it is important to know because it's important for why foldables became a reality. The two most popular screen types that you'll see in your everyday electronics are LCD and OLED. But all of the foldables that you've ever seen are OLED. And there's good reason for that. LCD, or liquid crystal display, for a high level overview at least, uses a backlight, usually of LEDs, to provide light for the display. It then passes through a polarizer, then it passes through a liquid crystal layer that uses tiny crystals that when electricity is applied to them, they can rotate varying amounts to determine how much light passes through them. And then there is a color filter and then another polarizer and finally a glass layer on top. Now, each of the subpixels here have either red, green, or blue color filters. So combining that with adjusting the brightness behind them using the liquid crystals is how we can control the different amounts of each color to give us the colors that the pixel needs to be and all of the pixels combined give us an image. OLED, again in an oversimplification, works in that we have a substrate layer that everything sits on, then an organic layer with three specific compound mixtures that when electricity is applied to them, they give off their own light in either red, green, or blue, and at various brightnesses as needed, again, to create all of the various colors that we want in an image. After that, that light goes through a polarizing layer and finally through a casing generally made of glass. Now, putting these side by side, OLED is a much thinner technology than LCD, and thinness is very important when you need to bend something. Thin, not so thin. The thing is though that thinness is not the only thing we need for a foldable or flexible display, and traditional OLED technology still has a few rigid components. First, we have the substrate where all of the components are layered on, and that's usually made of glass or something similar. Then we have the anode, which is one of the sublayers of the organic layer that accepts the electrons from the electricity as it passes through the organic compounds. And finally, the outer casing was always made of glass as well. Well, back in 2015, Samsung actually commercialized 
a flexible substrate made out of a polyamide. And this is what allowed for the Galaxy Edge series of devices with curved displays. But you can think of these as like flexible OLEDs that are still just encased in a rigid glass outside. Then in 2019, they commercialized a flexible anode layer and a flexible polymer to put on top, as well as a clear adhesive to hold all the layers together. And at that point, the original Samsung Galaxy Fold was born. And then since then, in 2020, the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip was then introduced to show their replacement to the polymer outer layer with an ultra thin glass or UTG that could bend simply because of how incredibly thin it was, which was then added to the Z Fold 2 after that. And then in 2021 with the Z Fold 3, they use a technology they call Eco Squared to remove the polarizer and combine the effect into the display itself to make that stack even thinner. Honestly, it's so cool to see how far foldables have come in such a relatively short period of time. I mean, even from the first Z Fold to the Fold 2, and now the latest version, the Fold 3. And someone has used all of them pretty extensively. I'll leave links below to all of the real world tests I've done on foldables for anyone who wants to check those out. It feels like some of the biggest changes are often the smallest ones. Like the way the screen feels, the fact that they have water resistance now, that they have pen support, and that the price is coming down further and further, getting it closer to the price of like a normal flagship phone. And I, for one, am definitely excited to see where they go from here. I got my glasses on, so you know we're gonna do some sciency crap. Truck. Truck. 